there are two main tips that will allow you to get way better in World of Tanks if you heed the advice within this video and of course we've got two replays that are going to showcase these tips and how maybe you can use the tips within this video to yourself implement into your own gameplay and hopefully get better within World of Tanks. So. First things first, we are showcasing a replay in the AMX M454, which is a fantastic all-round heavy tank. And the replays that we're showcasing are in heavy tank. So that is the kind of uh, crux, I guess, of this video. We are looking at heavy tanks, but they are applicable to all vehicles within the game, not just your typical heavy tanks. But the things that we want to talk about are anticipation and positioning. Now, these two things can be intertwined and many people will uh, get them confused with one another, but they are two distinct uh, different uh, kind of mentalities that you have to take within World of Tanks because I can tell you, you know, these are the weak points of every single heavy tank in the game. These are the weak points of every single tank destroyer in the game. And if that is beneficial to you, then please let me know in the comment section down below. But I feel like that is where, you know, you begin your World of Tanks journey and how you can initially get up to speed with the game itself. And it actually isn't where the majority of the difficulty comes within the game itself. So. This is where anticipation and positioning are the things that you will want to be doing in the game and how you can take your game to the next level. It's how players like Ayuxin, like Kaiju, like all of the top tier players within the game can manage to come away with results that you or I may think are unbelievable and how they can consistently do it and it's all about positioning and uh, as well as actually understanding when you know you have to push and I guess we'll first talk about positioning itself and this right there the uh, kind of ability of the AMX here to move position right there allows this player to not only take no damage other than the artillery shell but you know that is what it is artillery will hit you regardless of what vehicle you're in and regardless of what position you're in um, but essentially allows him to pick up two and a half thousand damage without even having really a scratch or even a real engagement where he was potentially threatened by the opponents and most people would have thought you know what the enemy team they must have just done something wrong. That's how he was able to push into that position. But in fact, it's not necessarily that the enemy team did anything wrong. They just didn't expect the positioning to be great from the AMX to the point where he could come away with the result that he did within this replay. So, what does positioning really mean in the game because there are multiple definitions that you could take for positioning number one being in a uh, an area where you can hit someone now of course if you are not able to hit anyone because you're in a position that is not allowing you to do that then that's bad but that isn't what we're on about with positioning positioning is all about making sure that your tank is in the best place possible at every potential opportunity that you can and for as long as you can possibly have your tank in that position. And that is where uh, I find is the hardest thing within World of Tanks. And it's not because it is innately uh, super hard to do. It's just that there are so many opportunities and so many decisions that you have to make within every single battle. There's probably over a hundred different micro decisions that you make that impact your own gameplay and can completely change the result of the battle. So it's about making sure that every that you can kind of make every single one of those uh, kind of decision making uh, principles uh, kind of slightly better or become on average much better and that is the difference between the top and the bottom players on your team the top players will consistently do average and that might sound really weird but they will consistently do the right thing 
Now, they may not consistently do everything exceptionally, but they will never really make any basic mistakes go wrong. And that is where um, the, the difference between the top and the bottom uh, really comes into effect. And as we've talked about in this game, the choice of kind of choosing when and when not to uh, choose where your tank is in the battle. So at this point, you can see that the enemy team are progressing in the southern area below where the AMX is. So what is the best opportunity to do here? Well, positioning wise, it's to move. And although many people would have got blinded by the fact that there's two vehicles in front of them, there's an Object 705 on full health, and there's also a Progetto. And most people may have just stayed there. They may have stayed, tried to get a shot on a tank that they're just never going to hit in the 705 because it was holed down. And of course, the Progetto may have fully reloaded and then ended up clipping you as soon as you turn around to try and take out the Cobra, the Fosh and the AE who would have been coming from behind. And that is really where you can uh, flip the game on its head where maybe you were uh, only on... 4,000 damage and that one split single decision, albeit wasn't outstandingly amazing and completely world breakingly uh, amazing, but it allows you to do the things that you need to do in the game. And if you continually make these good decisions, eventually they pay off within the game. And because there is so many decisions that you make on average, then eventually you're going to have uh, a good play and you're going to come away with some damage. And that is really how the top players come out. Now, I understand that this is a lot to take in. So I highly recommend you kind of pause the videos, go back, have a look, rewatch, find out any questions that you might need to ask. And of course, leave those in the comment section down below as I will be reverting back to this video uh, very regularly to update the comment section and reply to any questions you may have. Now, I'm not claiming to be an expert on World of Tanks. Of course, I very much doubt that anyone can really claim that uh, with any real um, conviction but either way uh, we're going to give a good go and that's ultimately what this channel is about it's about creating some content that hopefully you both enjoy and also find informative or one or the other i am just uh, yeah very interested to see what you guys want to see from the channel but I think this is a good place to start I and mean, it's a good place uh, for you guys to maybe learn a thing or two. Now, you saw there, obviously positioning was super important in this game. So if we jump down to the minimap here, as there's not a lot going on, uh, you can see that the 705 was in the cap circle. Now, if our AMX actually stayed where it was, he would have got sourced by the 705, the Progetto, and of course all of the vehicles that were coming from behind. So that was one amazing positioning move, was that sometimes you have to move forward even if you think that you're going to take a lot of damage because at the end of the day, you're going to take a lot more damage being hit from multiple angles than you are just being hit from one and that's going to increase your chance of winning, increase your chance of carrying the game and hopefully coming away with a victory. So that was number one. And there's some subtle things that the AMX has done in this game that maybe you didn't see on the first run through, but they're really, really important. And the AMX is uh, the player that is, is of course making a decision every step of the way that is kind of a few steps ahead. And positioning wise, this is super important uh, because what you need to do is think about not only your position right now, but think about your position in the future. And that is where anticipation comes in because yes, at one point in the battle, you can make sure that your positioning is superb. You could have an absolute field day sat in one position. Maybe you hold down with a super conqueror against people that just genuinely have no chance of penning you. But it only lasts for 30 seconds. Well, yes, that was a fantastic move from yourself. But considering it only lasted 30 seconds, what are you doing in the rest of the game? And that's where the consistency on anticipating what your opponents are going to do uh, is going to come in very, very clutch. And 
especially in carry situations like this where you're coming up against a tank destroyer that you know could potentially one shot you and that is the FV4005. Now the AMX M4 uh, 54 here does indeed have the last known target position so you, he knows that the FV4005 was last spotted up in the area uh, where the typical TDs will camp. Now it doesn't mean that he's there now, but it gives an indication as to where uh, they might be and where you can predict that they're going to be later on down the line. So that is uh, step number one in terms of something that I would recommend as a actionable thing that you can do right now in game if you haven't got the last known position. I'm pretty sure everyone will have at this point as um, <laughs> if you're watching this video, I would hope that you do. But if you don't go ahead and add that in to your settings, it's just a simple user interface face uh, kind of uh, thing that you can add in on the game settings but one thing that you'll notice here is that the AMX doesn't halter or falter or like just take any time to really think um, or kind of second guess himself and second guessing yourself is often how you end up failing really really hard and I've noticed this in my own gameplay is that if you're kind of should I or shouldn't I and you're not convicted to what you're going to do, you then don't anticipate and therefore you don't put yourself in a good position, which of course, as we talked about, is super important. Um, and therefore you end up kind of doing nothing. And by doing nothing, you are severely hindering your own game. So it's all very generic stuff that we're talking about. But I feel like a lot of people go over like this is an amazing spot to use. But Maybe they don't go over all of the thought process because it's the thought process that makes the good player not being able to, you know, flick onto the cupola of a mouse because there are only so many uh, advantages. There is only so, so good you can get from being, uh, you know, able to flick onto people or to be able to aim a mouse's cupola, uh, not cupola, but somewhere a weak point or uh, a cupola of a, uh, a tank destroyer or something like that. You know what I mean? Um, and it's far easier to improve your tactics and your actual gameplay than it is to, uh, you know, get an additional 5% win rate because you aim slightly better. Um, yeah, there's a, it's very much a cap uh, when it comes to that. But uh, you can see here, uh, this is the sort of scenario you want to be in. Now, the FE4005, this player right here, he knew, he knew that the FE4005 was going to have to pen him. And unfortunately for the 4005, he just didn't really anticipate that the AMX was going to have a brain to begin with and of course use the uh, friendly uh, FV4005 as cover so takes a shot then of course knows that this wreck is here so pulls back behind it the FV then has to take time to come around and in that time it reloads once again and comes away with a victory so once again, a brilliant replay that showcases some amazing things and hopefully that gives you an indication as to maybe how you could play an all-round heavy, but let's take a look at the Super Conqueror since we've mentioned it and a brilliant replay in that and give you some more tips potentially and more gameplay specific, I guess, rather than the generic that we've kind of talked about in this section. The next replay we have is, as we've mentioned, in the Super Conqueror. And this is, once again, a brilliant replay that showcases the power of a heavy tank when used by a player that knows about the heavy tank in question. Um, but it is also uh, trying to showcase the gameplay specifics that you can use in your own gameplay to improve, as well as implement the positioning and we'll highlight some areas where, of course, uh, this tactics and mentality of the best players in the game uh, are used within this. So you're seeing here early damage spots and early damage spots are how the best players end up uh, creating a kind of very quick, very easy way of uh, getting themselves some uh, early damage and maintaining their kind of damage standing if, for example, going for marks of excellence and and it's the knowledge of these early game spots that will allow a player 
to move from maybe a 55% win rate player up to a 60% because I find that the 55% bracket in World of Tanks is typically where you may know the weak points of tanks, you may know how to aim, you might have fairly good aim, uh, but you're actually limited by your knowledge of the tactics as we talked about in the first half of this video in the first replay. But how can we use these tactics that we've talked about, anticipation and positioning? Well, you're seeing here that when you're in a good position, a lot of players will try to do something, try to push, try to uh, feel like they're having an impact in the game when in fact the best thing to do is sometimes just to sit still. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's definitely a hard thing to do in the game when you're kind of thinking, well, surely I should be doing something, surely I should push, surely I should uh, get forward and, and do something within this game. And often that may be the case, but sometimes it's actually better to just sit back take in the uh, kind of game, see how it's faring and go on and kind of uh, move forward with the knowledge that you've gained uh, from kind of pushing and uh, and learning from the game as you're playing it and that is really what you're seeing here. Now our player here makes a brilliant decision. He knows that typical heavy tanks in this position on the enemy team where they are will sit down, they'll try and get hold down, they'll try and side scrape off of uh, the buildings that are kind of where you're seeing in front now. And if you can get into a position like this, where you have the hold down capability of a super conqueror, then yeah, of course you can hold back a ton of vehicles like the E75, like the Maotian, like the Yeager, and they really have no chance against you. And as much as many people will, uh, you know, complain about the fact that armor typically doesn't work when people just load premium as you're seeing the Jaeger managing to pen the super conqueror there it is possible but remember there are six tanks in front of the super conqueror all being held back by one tank so although you know you may not get the most damage every single game if you try and hold people back like this but if for example you think about well what happens when I hold back six different people? What happens when I get into a position like this? Well, you can realize very quickly that not only are you getting damage on these people when you take opportunistic shots at them, when you try and uh, find them out in the open, like for example, this 283 who's obviously stranded in no man's land right now. I don't know whether that's uh, <laughs> whether his brain's stranded in no man's land or himself. But either way, you can see here, uh, quickly shut down by the Super Conqueror, and it's all about the position. There is nothing exceptional about the aim or these crazy shells that are coming in from these ridiculous spots within buildings and stuff like that. Although this spot right here is a very good one, um, the, you do of course need to know the spots, but once you know them, once you kind of understand them, you can then make your decision making based upon that, and you can see here, um, just trying to get some shells into the IS-7 who appears to be side scraping or trying to push this side here. Now unfortunately for him, he just doesn't have the armor to actually bounce enough rounds here and the Super Conqueror having done what 8640 damage now decides you know what I've actually had a very very good game and it's time to push even more and in doing so you can potentially get some more damage on tanks like the 60TP and because of the fact that he's close enough to the opponents which is something that I always find uh, players struggle with within World of Tanks is that they may be a very competent player, they may be able to aim, they may know the weak points of enemy tanks, they may have a ton of different extra things but maybe they just don't understand how to be close to the action and that might seem really really silly or something that you think well obviously you have to be near your opponents but I can almost guarantee that you if you're watching this video probably find yourself in a position that is just not close enough to the damage um, and that means that you've probably played slightly wrong and I'm not saying that it means that you're a bad player or anything absolutely not it just means that 
you could have maximized your games even more and it's often these kind of small things that when you combine them all together like we've mentioned with the positioning uh, and with predicting what's going to happen that make the biggest result and you know you've watched both of these replays there's been absolutely nothing unbelievably crazy where they've just kind of i don't know sat there against five Jaegerus just bouncing everything and penning them every single time it's just been consistent good decision making good progress good positioning good awareness and of course knowing the weak points as you probably should in the game and that is your first starting point and once you get to that point it's then start to think about the things that we've talked about in this video and hopefully I haven't kind of convoluted it hopefully it's fairly uh, kind of understandable or at least you've got my gist and maybe you can start applying it in your own games I'm not going to give it there's no way of teaching you I cannot go if you do this in your game you are suddenly going to be able to know and become super aware of every sing single scenario and every single map but the intention is to just give you some thoughts to think about the different ways in which you can play and if you have any questions leave them in the comment section down below and I will try my hardest to answer every single one of them and of course if you see a comment that you think you know what I actually have the answer to that then feel free to leave that as well and if you are interested in seeing some unbelievable games and maybe some other guides from me then be sure to subscribe and of course like this video as it does take a fair old world to create and a fair old while uh, to think about what the best ways of uh, kind of displaying this information and hopefully the two replays that we showcased give you a good idea as to positioning and uh, yeah awareness within the game thank you very much for watching and i hope you join me in the next one goodbye